Did y'all have a good night? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, me and Ms. Hogan made it another day. Stand up, Ms. Hogan. Let them see who you are. That's a good thing. Her and I have been married for 32 years, working on 33. And uh, that used to be normal. But now all the flesh tormenting spirits are out and around. Louise made it another day with us, too. We, she got us the same color shirt again today. Y'all check it out. Luis Alberto. Luis Alberto is a Maya Quiche Indian from Guatemala. He's uh, God blessed him. We or blessed us with him, and uh, we're pretty blessed. <laughs> Called my kids last night in uh, Mexico. One of them, my oldest daughter, and she's doing fine, and they're doing good, and the work's progressing, and so that's a good thing, huh? And then my sons over in Louisiana, they're preaching this morning. They were, they were eating as many crawfish as they could yesterday. <laughs> they had boiled crawfish and boiled shrimp, and I was, I almost got jealous. I, <laughs> I felt it come up in my heart. I thought, boy, I should go back over there, participate in that crawfish boil. It was at my home church. <laughs> they had a thousand pounds of crawfish. Uh, I needed to be there helping them peel them. I'm almost a professional at that. Uh, but I didn't go. I stayed here. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, I suffered for the gospel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty fun. Well, before I get started on something here, y'all can go ahead and be looking up uh, in Acts, the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, does anybody have a question they'd like to ask me before I get moving? Oh, yeah. All right, I'll talk about that just for a little bit. It's going to cost you more than you're willing to pay. Yes. Uh, the question is, uh, what's it, you know, for a mature believer that's truly believing and seeking God, what's, what are some of the consequences? The consequences is the flesh is going to be disappointed. It's going to happen to you. Uh... <clears throat> One, one, there's this fella that I met, a very successful businessman uh, up in Tennessee. Any of y'all from that part of the world? All right, he's from, what was the name of that town up there north of, uh, north of Nashville that they're from? Gallatin. You know what that said? No, Gallatin. It's just a... Small town of about two or three hundred thousand. <laughs> no, it's not that big. No, it's not that big. No, I was joking with you. <laughs> very, very successful fellow. He had a contract for the city of Nashville, the infrastructure, and uh, his construction company was very wealthy, and they were making lots of money and all that. And the Holy Ghost was moving on these people, and they were, they bought us a pickup truck, uh, which we have to have lots of them where I work. Uh, so their company bought us a, a truck, and, they, and you don't get that every day in your life. I don't know if y'all have noticed. People don't just come around to your house every other week or so trying to offer you a new truck. Uh, so it, he asked me what I wanted. I said, well, if you're going to buy what I want, I want a one-ton forward because they don't make nothing else. But I heard tell they're starting some new companies. Uh but if I was y'all, I wouldn't be deceived by them. <laughs> Ford is the best 
four-wheel drive. And uh, I have millions of miles to prove it. Because <laughs> we're steady pulling them Chevrolets home. <laughs> uh, Dodge, you don't even, they're not even in the run because... <laughs> Actually, Dodge had it for a few couple of years. They did real well. That Cummins engine with them, with those front ends where they were, they were awesome, tough. Then they changed to a sealed front end, and it, you know, a guy like myself, we, you got to, along with being spiritual, you got to be a good administrator. Do you understand? And you, there, there's not limitless supplies of finances usually. And, and those $800 per side front ends that are vacuum sealed, you don't get them off every tree where I live. So you got to go with something that you can uh, <clears throat> be practical about. And so far, Ford has kept to the practicality. But anyway, they bought us. I said, well, you just buy me a good work truck. It'd be a one ton, you know, good 7.3 turbo diesel, six forward gears, four, four, four ten rear ends. You know, do your best to get it positive traction, limited slip front. You can go ahead and put a 12,000 pound winch on it and be all right. <laughs> a couple of good bumpers. And you know, so I was, you know, he asked me how I wanted it rigged. And I wanted it rigged like he rigs his trucks for work. It's a, it's a work truck for me. And um, you know what? They sold that into our ministry and it was a blessing and I still have it. And I, that's my personal work truck. I use it in the field. That's what I go around, and that's what I use. And I really enjoy it. I've, I've, I've worked on it some and put Detroit lockers on it. I don't know if y'all know what that is, but it puts positive track where you don't have to worry about getting stuck much. If you do, it take a couple of caterpillars to pull you out. And so, you know, it's a blessing. But that man, I went and saw him a while back. Right after they bought us that truck, the devil gets hostile at you doing right. Amen. All right, now, see, you're, you're used to teachings that tell you, you give me 10 bucks, God will give you 1,000. Praise the Lord, it'll all work out. Well, that's a basic truth, but to get the 1,000, you're going to have to pay first. And y'all are not taught that much here. God will bless you. It will happen. But you're going to have to understand if you're going to touch God's anointed for the good, the devil is going to persecute you to try to get you to stop. See, the, I, the people that hook up with us, the first thing that happens is they get tested. These people lost $200 million. Wow, what a test got to the point of suicide, got to the point of marriage destruction, got to the point of kid destruction, lost the whole business. And I was sitting in their living room the other day, and I'm looking at them. I didn't know any of that happened. They didn't call me on the phone and cry on my shoulder or nothing. But God spoke to me to go there because I don't do house calls. That's just not what I do for a living. Um, it ain't that I'm too busy or too good or nothing like that. That's not true. But if heaven wants me somewhere, he'll direct me to go there. It's simple for me. And uh, that man looked me right in the face and said, why are you here? I said, well, heaven told me to come here. That's one thing. And it seems to me like you're probably in a bind. But I got some good news for you. Your view of life changed. Now you're looking at it from God's viewpoint. It's a blessing to be wealthy and to be, have affluence and power. It's not something that you get on your own. God gives it to people. Now you see that. Now you understand that his physical body was completely, that man was a picture of health and completely got destroyed. I said, let me just say this to you. I'll just look to you in the face and tell you. Heaven is going to turn it around for you starting today. And he looked at me. I mean, the torture. I've never lost myself personally a few hundred million dollars. Have you? No. 
And uh, so I don't know that feeling. I don't understand that. And I've, I haven't gone from the top of the extreme cream of the crop to normal life, which they consider the bottom, <laughs> which is like me. I told him it ain't so bad. <laughs> it ain't so bad to be normal. I said, because that's who God likes to touch is normal people. He likes to make them supernatural. You know what he said to me? Watch this. This is not going to mean a lot to most of you. But I'm from Louisiana. And I, I really like dogs. All right? Uh, sorry, I'm a country boy myself. I apologize. I, <laughs> but I like these dogs. There's a particular dog called a Catahoula hog dog. Now, I got these dogs. And I like them. Now, this Catahoula hog dog is a ferocious thing. They run around, chase pigs, razorbacks, and, uh, and they, they get, they, they're tough little old dogs. They, and I had me one, his name's JJ. Pretty good sized fella, got up to around 120 pounds and he would take out anything I asked him to. He's a good boy. He would go with me and he, I mean, he was, he's a good boy. Fearless. I like things like that. Well, JJ got pretty famous because lots of people knew him and are y'all familiar with, uh, with the, the move at Brownsville over here? Uh, the Pensacola outpouring? Well, we, we went over there and taught a while, and God blessed us, and we hooked up with them. And they, um, they sent some people down to our work, their best. Now, I want you to understand that my dog is full of the Holy Ghost. And he's obedient. Now, you're not going to agree with me probably. But that's okay. You're wrong and I'm all right with that. <laughs> Woo! My, 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 brother Hogan. See, we need each other. See, we're good for each other. They sent me these people down that they were trying to get on the mission field and my job was to see to it that none of them make it. <laughs> and I'm usually successful. Because see, y'all's opinion is nice air-conditioned facility, eating well, everything going your way. You think that is success. I think that we can go out this door, go to that bar next door, and nearly everybody in there does the same exact thing you do. Are they successful? Worldly? Yes. But with Jesus, is a different type of success. And it takes a battle. And these, I call them kids... You know, they were in their mid-twenties. And they're, I mean, they're supermen. They have a big ass written on there. <laughs> and they, they come there to me and they say, Brother Hogan, I'd like a private session with you. And so I set them all up at the same time. <laughs> Does anybody in here know the word chubinata? Anybody understand the term chubinata? No, chubinata. Chubinata is a, it's a type of a cat claw thorn that grows and you cannot get rid of it. And on our ranch that was given to us in Mexico, we have about 20 acres of that. And the grass grows in it, and its grass gets seven or eight feet tall up in the, these little juvenile trees. They're very, but it's very painful. Luis, if, if I had him take his shirt off, you'd see he's been with me in my office. 
My office is the juvenile patch. See, this, and so these people, I set all of them up to go to my office. And I didn't tell them that my office was a tubinol patch. But not one of them asked. <laughs> See, y'all are used to air conditioning, sit in a nice chair, everybody looking at each other doing this. Praise the Lord. With different thoughts in their minds. And I don't have that. I think that's hypocritical. So I brought these young people with the S on their chest in my truck to the Chubinal patch and opened the tailgate, but my dog was there too. And I had a two gallon ice water cooler sitting in there. It was my, they, did, they forgot to bring some because they never asked. Assumption is a big problem. And I set it on the tailgate of the truck. And I gave each one of them, there was 18 of them, a sharp machete. I said, if you want to talk to me, I'll be in my office. It was 120 degrees, no wind. 88% humidity. Oops. I went out there with my machete and started chopping. Luis was out there chopping. We have to clear this tubinol so the cows can eat. It's part of the job. One of the young men come over. He said, Brother Hogan, can I have some water? I said, help yourself. I said, but I told that dog <coughs> not to let you have any. Because you didn't think to bring some, and you think I owe it to you. But I don't see anywhere in the Bible where I owe you a drink of water. Now, if you can talk that dog into letting you have it, you're welcome to it. And that boy said, Brother David, I, I feel faint. I said, son, the water's sitting there. Help yourself. And he looked at me, he said, I've got faith. I said, the Bible definitely says that you can tread on scorpions and snakes. That every creature has been put under your domination. Go ahead. I said, but I want to warn you, that dog's got the Holy Ghost. And he's very obedient to me. He is not your friend and neither am I. So he took off over there and that dog stood up and warned him twice. Growled at him, don't come over here. The dog was in the shade. The water was dripping right on his head. <laughs> and that boy walked up there praying in tongues just as good as you could have yourself. And you would have. <laughs> but where does, it, where does the Bible say that we owe each other. Can you help me with that? Huh? Uh huh. If a man tells me that he has faith and my dog has to obey him, Shouldn't I let him try? Or should I not? Come on, help me out. Y'all know all things. Y'all are Americans. You've got it all figured out. As long as it's in a convenient location, you've got it all figured out. And as long as it's going your way and you know what's happening, you've got it figured out. But when it gets isolated against you, and it seems like somebody is on purpose. And I was. Testing you. How are you going to hold up? Hello? Don't go quiet on me. Let's talk about this. <laughs> what can you say? That's right. 
That, that is a true statement. What can you say? And that boy really wanted that water. But that dog really didn't want him to have it. I've been with that dog for 10 years. I've been with that boy for three days. He thinks I owe it to him because he came there from Brownsville. I'm going to tell you something. Because you've been to Toronto, because you've been to Brownsville, don't make you no more spiritual than putting you in the oven makes you a biscuit. Do you understand what I just said to you? It takes going to God and getting his presence. The water's sitting there. And to that boy, my dog was a devil. And to, that, to me, that dog was my friend. See, there's a difference of opinion. That's why the boy got bit. I told that dog not to hurt him. And he didn't. But he did tear his britches leg off. He didn't get the water. Because <laughs> after the second time, I did, I did teach that dog to give him two chances to, to not go there. He reached and got him by the britches leg and flipped him in the air. And then the boy was really quick to be coming right back beside me. Now he's loyal to me. Huh. Brother David, would you please get me the water? Son, if you'd have started out like that, you'd have got the water the first time. Because I know how to get by the dog. Hello? You think you got the right to get by the dog. Are you sure you do? Are you sure God hadn't put people in place to help you get by the dog? So you can have all the water you want and be refreshed. I figure that's a good lesson. I walked up there, told the dog, sit down, don't move, dog. <laughs> dog sat down, didn't move. I said, son, the dog's not going to move now. Get you all the water you want. He went over there. That dog ain't even acting like he was there. Just sitting there just as pleasant. <laughs> he got by the dog. He got his water. The boy works with me on the field right now. Because he told me, thank you for getting me by the dog. He said, is there any other places that I need to get by the dog? I said, there is, son. And I can help you. But until you recognize that the water is there and it is for you, but there are things in the way that you need to know about, you'll never be successful. And that's up. That's a good lesson, huh? Cost him a pair of blue jeans. <laughs> but Ms. Hogan and I support that boy $100 a month now. So he got his blue jeans back. Hello? And he's marrying one of, our, uh, one of our missionary daughters now. So you see, he learned his lesson and he's learning and he's working good out there. And he works with my son and they, he's a good boy. He's really doing right. But there ain't a thing owed to you. It's grace the reason you get anything. Okay? All right? Does that help a little bit or does that hurt? It <laughs> cause more trouble. Just be careful them dogs. Because they are there. And they're not friendly though. My dog was friendly. All right, any more questions or are you too nervous to ask now? Yes, ma'am? The man in Tennessee, I saw him. Cause, oh, yeah, yeah, I need to tell you that because he asked me, uh, while we were sitting there, see, the reason I brought the dog up because they're such good dogs because that man in Tennessee... He said, I know you're a Catahoula man. I said, that's right, I am. He said, I want one. I said, now, wait a minute. That takes a particular kind of fella. He said, I figure I'm that kind of fella. I said, okay. So I went down that swamp, and I found these people that's got these hog dogs, and I got him one. And I called him up. I said, all right, I got your dog. I'll meet you. On the way, actually, on the way down, coming down here. Isn't that right? I dropped that little old puppy. He was eight weeks old. Beautiful glass-eyed hog, you know, kind of hula hog dog. Brought him by there, gave him to him. And he shook my hand and I was leaving because I had to go. I ain't got, sorry I don't have time to dilly-dally and be social. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> he
He said, I want to tell you something. The other day you prophesied to me. I said, I sure did. He said, I just want to tell you one thing. It was the truth. I said, I knew that when I said it. He said, God just gave me a contract. has got sacks full of money. I said, now, son, what are you going to use it for? Your own personal self or the gospel? And I walked and got in my truck and left. See how life is? It's simple, isn't it? Holy Ghost. <laughs> Jesus. Everybody needs a hog dog experience. Without it, I don't know if you'll ever get the ice water out of the can. You'll just sit over there and want it and get mad. Isn't that something? Come on, Holy Ghost. Well, every year the juvenile grows back. So every time I get somebody to come down, I have to meet them in my office. <laughs> Not everybody, just certain ones with S's on their chest. <laughs> Acts chapter 1. Holy Ghost. Any more questions before we proceed? So there's a couple of things I want to share with you before I go. I, go, I got to go on down. Uh, we're going up to north of Tampa here to Oldsmar. I guess that's how you say it. Never been there before. I'll go see this afternoon. But there's a couple things you need to know. There, you know, God has things for you. I'm going to share something to deeply answer that question you asked better. If it's all right. If this is not what we want to do, we'll do something else. I'm all right. Now, we can talk about any subject you want to. I don't. God's blessed our work and we've been able, we've been blessed to see the human body healed or recreated on every organ and raised from the dead hundreds of times. We can talk about anything you want to. I mean, I, every disease, every one of them healed, all of them, AIDS included, all of them. Uh, I was in a village here, oh, I guess it was last year, 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 maybe a year before last, and I was in a village and uh, it was raining. And they were a new church, and they didn't have a building yet. So I'm standing in the rain, preaching. And <clears throat> they just stand right there and listen. And when we got through, there was a little old grandma walked up there to me, and she was shaking with Parkinson's. And so there was a man, you know, it was her son. I said, what's, what's the matter with her? She, he said to me, she's dying. She has Parkinson's. So I, I'm familiar with that. But the son never said to me what his problem was. And it didn't dawn on me because she's got Parkinson's. I figured he was down to take care of her. I just, there you go, there's assumption again. He had a hold of her shoulders and, man, I touched that lady. Listen, rain, you know, the elements were against us. The, it wasn't a comfortable situation, but God blasted us. Me and the grandma Went in the mud, buddy. <laughs> but mud, will, it'll wash right out. It's not that distasteful. I got up and went ahead and prayed for some more people. She got up and went on about her business. Well, the son got hit too. The lady got healed of Parkinson's and the son had been turned out by the doctors with advanced, but not critical, but advanced AIDS. He got healed too. Amen. Isn't that something? Yeah. Man, I'll, I'll, I'll find that to be uh, interesting. Awesome. Bless him. Well, I, I want to I wanna share here. Look, look over here in um, Acts 1, uh, 7 and 8. They're very famous verses. Y'all can probably by memory quote me verse 8. You probably can't do as well with verse 7. But like getting by that dog, okay? That's an awesome lesson. It really is. God has the anointing, the power. It is available. But you're going to have to figure out how to get it. Because you go to a church that believes that the power is available, because you pray to God who gives the power, doesn't make you automatically 
full of the power of God. Y'all have figured that out, haven't you? And I'm not here to rub it in on you to, uh, in a negative way. I want it to be positive. I want you to desire to get it. To want the power of God for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Verse 7 says, he said to them, it's not for you to become acquainted with. And to know what time brings. See, most Christians, I'm not talking about non-spirit-filled people. I'm talking about spirit-filled Christians. You spend most of your time working on peripheral problems. You, you won't confront the issue that the word of God says I can have it, but I don't have it. What's the problem? What am I doing to stop that? We need to confront that. We need to make it our issue in life. So that God's power will come on us. For it is, and it's, I'm going to tell you something. Most of you in, in here, I can see that you've had a little time with Jesus. You understand a little bit about what's going on. Uh, I mean, you got a copy on where we need to be going. You, you, you're figuring it out. That's great. But we've got to address the fact of our lack of power. Because you're going to probably be okay worshiping God, seeking God, you going down through here, bumping into things, and eventually working through them. God helping you. But you've got to get beyond that. You, most Christians are surviving. But you're not walking in abundant life. You do have life. I mean, you can, I can see it on you. You do have life. But abundant life doesn't mean you can open up your pocketbook and give people hundreds of dollars when you're around them. That, that's a, that is, money is a blessing. It's not, it doesn't prove you're powerful. Healing aids proves you're powerful. I'm telling you, I can go in that bar over there with the right attitude and I can talk some of them people out of their $100 bills. Just like I could you. You hear me? Am I right or wrong? Yeah, I'm right. But I can't go in that bar over there and get them people to understand and call on the name of Jesus if I'm dying with cancer. But I can in here. I can come in here sick and your immediate response is, let us pray for you, please. Can we, let, look here what the Bible says. And you begin to do right and you approach and address the problem, their problem. Whoever it is. Me, let's say me. All right? But the percentage is too low on how many people are truly getting touched. We've got to upgrade in the power of God. There's, every time I come out of Mexico, y'all have new doctrines and new places to hide. You figure out ways to not take the blame for not having the power of God. If the Bible is true, then let's front, let's confront it. Let's face it. And let's bow to Jesus. And let's get Jesus to touch us. No matter how long it takes. All right? But times. You know, one of the, one of the things y'all deal with, it comes around, it goes in cycles. I think this is about my fourth or fifth time to hear it. It goes in cycles. Y'all worry about tribulation about the rapture of the church and you, you endlessly talk about it when there's not one thing you can do about it. 
The Bible point blank says it's in God's hands and the time will not be given. Not even Jesus or the angels know. But you endlessly talk about it. Uh, why? You're that bored? Brother David, the devil's here. He's bothering me. Oh, yeah. Somebody immediately pipes up. Oh, well, don't worry, brother. Christians can't be possessed with a demon. Oh, well, wait. I heard this great teaching where they can be. And so there it goes. The next 25 years, round and round, splitting churches over and over. Whether a Christian can or can't be possessed with a devil. Who cares? I mean, what? The Bible calls it endless genealogies that have no value. If you're going to spend your time seeking God, please, please, some things are to be left to the Holy Ghost that you can't have, there's nothing we can do about it. But there's many things that we can do something about, and one of them is the power of God. We can approach heaven to be filled with the power of God. It says right here in verse 8, you shall receive what? All right. Every one of y'all have read this hundreds of times probably. When you touch a person, what's the percentage of them being healed? I mean, let's be honest. You don't have to tell me. I don't want you to, you know, holler out at me. But it bothered me. And I sought God for four years to, for the dead raising. And but what, I, what I did not know, all right, I, you're talking about naive. And I was right, though, about seeking God. Whether I was right about Whether my attitude was right or whether I, what I, the, the way I was going about it was right or not, because I wanted to see God for myself. I wasn't satisfied to go down to the bookstore and figure out what the latest new fad is and buy all the books up and know about it. Man, I want to be, I want to be part of the reign. I want to be burned with the fire. I want to be on fire. I want to be in the river flowing. I want to be blown by the wind. You hear me? I want to be part of what, whatever its name is. I'm good with it. Because all I got to do is listen to y'all for a little while. And I apply biblical terms to it. I'm with, I'm with you. You never know that I don't know what you're talking about. Isn't that something? Because I am just not interested in the superficial. I'm interested in the core power. Man, I want that pure energy. Do you know the Bible? You know what the Bible calls it over Revelations? A pure energy crystal river that flows from the throne of God. I want to go to that pure water and dip in my horn and have it full and drink it. Straight Holy Ghost power. And I want to walk up to any opposition of God and destroy it. Just completely take it out. <laughs> Man, isn't that right? Isn't that right? <laughs> that's what I want to do. And so that's how I approach it personally. I don't listen. I don't, I don't, be, I don't, I don't get off track. It's another form of discipline. I got that. Um, uh, but I don't, I don't, I listen to, to what you're saying and if I know the end of what you're telling me doesn't lead me to a greater walk with God, I don't, I don't even listen. 
I, I just, I'm nice to you, then I'm gone. Look at this. The, the Amplified says, you shall receive power. Many people tell me, but Brother David, I don't have, I, I don't feel like I'm able. You know what? It's true, you're not. That is a true statement. You are not able. But God, right here, this word amplified up, another, another meaning for power is ability. You can ask me about any kind of a miracle, I can tell you about one. But the first time that I approached the miracle, I did not know what to do. I had no experience. And I probably did it wrong. But the results are positive. All right? Heaven backs us when we bow. But when you spend all of your time attaining knowledge, when you get through, you've got knowledge. I don't want that. I, I can ask you and describe something. You can give me the right word in English. Same in Spanish. I do it all the time. French. Same in French when I'm in France. I describe things and they give me the right word so I can keep going. Same in German. But when it comes like the other day, this mama, today's Mother's Day, we're going to hit that a couple of licks here. I have no way to describe to you how I appreciate mothers. My mama was an awesome lady. My grandmas, they loved Jesus. I was raised in a very stable Holy Ghost house where for generations everybody's stable and the kids end up serving God and you know so you, so I don't understand a lot of other things but I do understand a good mama I was in a swamp over in Louisiana the other day and the swamp the name of the swamp is Boney D good idea <laughs> And I was sitting there. And his mama walks up with his baby, about four-year-old, five-year-old toddler. Now, you mothers are amazing. You're just, you just slapped up amazing. Because once you decide, do you know in the mission field, my problem is not women like it's, even though our work is so hard, uh, the conditions are hard. People always think, well, the women are, you know, no. No, my problem is the men. Because you ladies are amazing. Once you make your mind up, it's okay. Men are not that way. They figure they can change things. Isn't that amazing? But once a woman makes her mind up, see, I'm married to one. She's a mama and a grandma. And when her mind gets made up, there's this look comes on her. And all of you ladies have it. Every one of you. Now just be careful how you use it. Because it's very useful and it's very, to me it's awesome. I'm not degrading you at all. I, I find it, I, I, it's powerful to me. Because it don't make a difference what's going on. Once you make your mind up, it's going to happen. That mama walked up there with, to me with this baby and looked at me right in the face. And I know that look. I've been married nearly 33 years. I, I got it. <laughs> yes, ma'am, what do you want? I want my baby healed. You know, you know, there wasn't no rebuttal to that. The answer is yes, ma'am. And I'm smart enough to say yes, ma'am. <laughs> Might not look it, but I am. I said, what's the matter with that baby? She said, my baby. Now, what's this? Was born without any kind of drainage, any kind of uh, uh, sinus drainage, tubes. They weren't there. And I said, okay. 
Because, you know, I mean, we're talking creative miracle here. And I mean, that woman was fixed. Do you understand what I said to you? She ain't hearing no music. She ain't seeing no, she don't see prophets and apostles and pastors and teachers and she don't see none of that stuff. She heard faith and she believed it. And she said, I want my baby healed. Yes, ma'am. I'll do my best. You know, and she is satisfied with that. She said, okay. And she just, I mean, she's got me. She's locked. You understand? I mean, I, I'm telling you, y'all got to get this. <laughs> and I said, yes, ma'am. Reached and laid my hands on the face of that little old baby. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Tears are running down at mama's eyes. She said to me, Brother David, we ain't got the finances. And I feel bad. I said, yes, ma'am. But what if Jesus heals your baby? How you going to feel then? She said, I feel good. I said, yes, ma'am. Let's go there. Let's dwell on things above where Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. Let's don't dwell on the negative being taught to us and been presented to us and that we can actually see with our very own eyes. Isn't that right? How about that? I said, let's talk about Jesus. Let's do that. She said, okay. Y'all, I am amazed just like you're going to be. They went home, put that baby to bed, took care of it, had the medicines and all the things they had to do in the way, I don't know all the things they had to do, a bunch of stuff. And that little old baby, in the morning, about, I think it was three o'clock in the morning or something like that, it seems like, woke up crying. They go running in there. And there's tears running down that baby's face. They carry that baby up to that hospital and the doctors are astounded. They gave it an all-day checkup. There's brand new ducts and canals all in that baby's face and drainage is where it's supposed to be. Jesus created in that baby. See, but, but had I followed contemporary thought, I would, have, I would have left myself out of the equation and started talking to the mama about, well, darling, who opened the door to this tragedy? We need to be careful about how we're addressing the enemy. Y'all heard these terms before? Sure you have. I'm going to tell you how to address it. The Lord rebuke you, devil, in the name of Jesus. That's how you address it. Simple, eh? It's the ability of the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when what happens? Go ahead, read your Bible. When the Spirit of God comes on you. How many of you in here are full of the Spirit of God? Just go ahead and raise your hand. Oops. All right. The percentage ought to be greater of victory. We've got to work on it, all right? That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to talk you into understanding the need to confront the issue of our, our lack. You, you're sitting there in your hip pocket or in your purse, your wallet, and you're doing okay. You have money for a hamburger in a few minutes. You're okay. You have fuel and your, your bills are paid at the house. You got a job sitting in front of you. Most of you do. And you're, you're pretty much secure. All right? Why do you think you're safe? Well, uh, you don't have an answer for that. That's why. You're not safe. The rug can be jerked out from on you in a New York second. And we all really know that. That's why we need the mercy of God. That's why we need the grace of God. We need Jesus' ability. We need his efficiency. We need his might, his power, his understanding through the Holy Ghost. 
we went to a village some years ago. Now it's about 13 years ago. We forevermore got beat up in there. Literally, they beat us up. They run us out of town. Don't ever come back. We don't want this here. We don't want this name of Jesus gospel here. We serve witchcraft here. Boy, that's an irritating thing to me. I mean, I mean, these people are so blinded. Jesus is so mercy. And they got a second-rate God. And he got their minds blinded. And, they're, but they're, and so we started working on it. Finally, we got us a little core of people. The, the villagers rose up and killed them all. And that's something. So what do you do? I'll tell you what we did. We backed up. Number one, we don't want to get anybody else hurt. Is it, isn't it worth it? Of course it's worth it. If, if, before you go making y'all's American statements, your cliches at me, you go down there and spend your time in the mountain, then I'll listen to you. Okay? You hear me? Okay, don't throw a cliche out that you came back up. And I got with the elders and we sit and we talked and we prayed and we fasted and we, we know it's the will of God for us to go in there. We went back three years later and we sought the Lord and we went in and same thing, they ran us out and ran us out. This went on for about 10 years because the first time when they killed all of our Christians, you can't believe the power that breeds to the opposition. I mean, they feel powerful because they've defeated us. But what they've done, they did kill our brothers, and that's a seriously interruptive thing in your life. I mean, it, it, it has complications in your emotions, I'm going to tell you. All right? But it does not mean you lose. You've got to trust that Jesus knows what's going on and that he wants them people born again, even the ones that committed the atrocities. They need the blood of Jesus. And somehow we have to be mature enough and understanding enough to give them what they need regardless of what they think. And that's difficult sometimes. And the more we approach this village, the more hostile it got. Finally, the elders told me, Brother David, we don't want to go back. Now, there ain't one of y'all sitting in this house that would blame them. I didn't blame them either. I said, hey, I got it. I tell you what, let's do. And this happened last year. This is, y'all, amazing. The power of God is before us. Is that true? Yeah. The Bible is clear that we can have it. Is that true? But it's also clear that we're not walking in the depth of it. Would you agree with, with me on that? I'm not going to tell you that we are, nor have I come here belligerent against you as some kind of an authority. I told you in the beginning, I'm not that. What I am is a person that loves Jesus. God's given a measure of grace to, and I'm happy about that. And I really am blessed. But we got to step on into it. And you're sitting here hearing me. We lost some brothers. We've lost lots of them. Y'all don't know about martyrdom. I ain't said a word about that. That's where I lose uh, nearly everybody when I start talking martyrdom. But I can't see why those people should give their life for the gospel in vain. If I have to give mine, I will. So that others can have the gospel and we kept going back and kept going back and finally the brothers just told me no uh, brother David please look here uh, let's just dust dust our feet off those people and boy that's hard for me to do because God's called me to them and I reminded them do you not remember that you was like them a few years ago and see that's what I got to remind you of Anybody walking down that street, you was just like them just a short while ago. That's why we've got to have the patience and the maturity to reach them. And that's why we need the power of God. Is this making sense or not? 
And so, all right. Yeah, it cost us quite a bit, to tell you the truth. I can't tell you the thousands of man hours we put into it. In the, so this is something y'all don't think about. When, we, when I get up here telling all these great miracles, you don't think about the thousands of man hours, the diesel, the vehicles, the us putting out, us giving, turning gray-headed over it, you know. <laughs> That's something that's not, you don't think about it. But I want you to think about it. Because somebody did it for you. And you need to think about doing it for who God called you to. But they, it's got to be in the power of God. People need you walking in the power of God. Holy Ghost. So we kept going, you know, and finally I, I, I set it up. I said, all right. So I got the, el the main elders together. We sat down and we discussed it. And we fasted for 14 days. And we saw specifically for this area. And we went in. And I went up there with them. I'm on my mule, and I mean every house. Slamming the door right in your face. Bow. This is, this is the Indian village, big thing. It's about 5,000 Indians. It's big, big, big. And they're very powerful people. Mucho hechicería, lots of witchcraft. And they wouldn't even give us a drink of water. If we would go to one of the manantiales spring to get a drink of water, the people would leave. I mean, it's a bad feeling, y'all. And finally, I decided, because we'd been up there about three hours, and I mean, it was, it was rough. I decided, well, we got to leave. I guess they was right. Jesus, they hate us. They hate you. And I guess we're going to have to dust our feet off. And now, we've been working on this village for lots of years, over a dozen years, Right? And this little old kid ran up to me and he said, there's a man over here who wants to talk to y'all. I want you to pray for him. I said, really? He said, yeah, he's the head witch doctor. I said, he wants me to pray for him. Yeah. Hmm. Now we all got a little glimmer of hope thinking, maybe this is our opening. After all these years, Maybe this is our opening. We went over there and it was prayer all right. He got us all over there and he, he got up in our face and said, I'll tell you, you'll never win here. And he started cursing us by the names of his God. That's a bad feeling. I, I, I'm just sitting there. You know, sweat's just running down my face. I done got us all up before daylight. We made that trek up that mountain. It's four hours up there. I mean, buddy, I could not believe it. And I, he's got all of his stuff going, all of his incense, all of his things are going, and I mean, he's on us, you know. And I'm backing away from him. Because you don't ever turn your back on these guys. And I'm backing out of his, out of his presence. And I mean, those elders with me are hostile now. And they have a right to be. Anybody would. Uh, and we have been overbearingly patient with these people to get the gospel to them. And we're champions. Do you hear me? We are elite soldiers. And what we do, we're good at it. But we lost. And I'm going, boy, you know, because I just can't get it. I, I just can't accept defeat. I, I'm one of those kind. <laughs> and we have been pushed and beaten killed and everything else put in jail in this town already over and over and over but I just can't accept it I just, I just flat won't accept it and I'm walking back over to my horse and my son-in-law is there brother Dave you want me to get him ready I said no you go ahead and take the horse I'm going to walk I'm going to look around there's got to be there's got to be an opening here we're just missing it. And they, every one of them turned and looked at me. Brother David, you have done your best. We are your best men. 
And we are not ashamed nor afraid. And we have confronted the devil. And we're going home. I said, okay. But I'm going to walk. Now see, we're completely defeated. You got it? Do you understand what I just said to you? Including some of our brothers being killed here. And I mean years of torture in this place. I mean, it was rough. And I'm walking real slow. And they done, they done got way ahead of me. I am so defiant to the devil. I hate him. I, I, oh, I can't believe we're getting beat up this bad. Because I'm a winner, I tell you. I even said it to the devil. Don't you know I'm a winner? How many times you felt like this? Quite a few. I know you have. Well, let me just help you. Is it all right if I help you? I'm walking real slow. I've done, everybody has done what I ask them to. All the prophets have nothing. I said, I'm telling you, that's a bad feeling. I'm not used to that. And we're walking, and I'm walking out of there, and, I, and they're all, they all went over the hill. That witch doctor still, I can still hear him chanting. I mean, it's just grating on me. And I'm walking real slow, and I'm looking in that jungle. There's got to be a doorway of power here. It's got to be here. I can't believe all these years have gone by and not one person is going to accept Jesus. I just, I, I just can't take that. I just, actually, I'm not going to take it. And I'm walking real slow and they're gone and, and I, I noticed this little old boy standing there. He's about, oh, about from here to them, about 10 foot from me. And he's just standing there in the jungle. And, and I had to look to see him. I mean, because they're invisible. You hear me? These people are invisible. I mean, you, the whole experience we've got, we still, I'm pretty good, but they still get by me. But because he ain't saying a word, he's just standing there. And I saw him. I looked at him. And I stopped, and I'm just turned, and I'm just looking at him. Now, here I'm, a white man foreigner and he should have run but he didn't and I'm, I'm steady I'm just looking at him I'm not going to approach him but I'm just looking at him then I noticed that he had something in his arms what did he have no he had some oranges Now, what does that have to do with the gospel? Same thing my dog did. Great lesson here if you'll listen. Y'all grow oranges down here, don't you? I'm sitting there, and that little old boy's got oranges, and I'm, and I'm looking at them. And I'm, and I'm talking to them because I've learned their, their language. I, I speak Aztec. I said, uh, where are you going with those oranges? You know what he said to me? What's this? Now what's this? They're yours. I said, what? I've been going there for years and nobody's ever offered me a drink of water. I was just cursed by the, by the number one witch doctor. <clears throat> we have been scorned, killed, jailed, and I never got an orange. The way it looked, my men were right. But I'm going to tell you this. Every one of my men, and they are the best. I am not talking them down one bit. I, I esteem those men I work with. They're awesome people. They love Jesus, and they're dedicated, and they're faithful people. But every one of them missed those, that boy with them nine oranges. Well, duh. A kid with nine oranges, who, I mean, like, who cares? Well, keep listening. Great story here. Good lesson about the power of God. Answers your question pretty thorough, I think. I said, who told you to give me an orange? He turned around and did this. I looked up the hill and sitting there, 
on his heels was a man. He said, that's my daddy. He told me to give you an orange. I said, really? I'd be glad to take an orange. I reached out, and that boy gave me an orange. And I sat right there in front of him, opened that orange up, and I ate. You talking about good. Man, that was one of them great big Valencias. Man, it was awesome. I said, who's the other oranges for? He said, those men that are with you. I said, really? See, they all missed their orange. Now, I got all of them. <laughs> My son-in-law, smart man, he came back over the hill, just popped his eyes over and was watching me. And I'm sitting there eating an orange. He said, uh, Brother Dave, what are you doing? I said, get the rest of them. Come back. Y'all missed it. He said, what? I said, get everybody else. He went and got them. They come back. And that boy gave each man an orange. You hear me? Each man got an orange. And I told my, my, one of my other boys, I said, each one of these oranges represent a, cert, a person going to get born again today. I said, you see that man sitting up there watching us? He's the daddy of this boy right here. You go with him to his house. God's going to give us a church in his house. And they all went, what? I said, boys, you were overcome by your sight. You got to be overcome by the Holy Ghost. Or you'll forever go down through life missing your oranges. You hearing me or not? You need to listen to me. You doing right and everything you do ain't working? Stop. Walk slow. Look for the oranges. They're there. But you got to find them. You hear me? Every one of y'all let y'all's kids play them games. How do they get so good at those games? It's because they got the patience to look for the right kind of treasure to make them powerful enough to keep winning the game, go to the next level. You need to learn from your kids. Look for the treasure. It's around you somewhere. Your key to victory is sitting right there. You just got to not be affected by the onslaught of the witchcraft or the onslaught of the principalities or even death. And that's not easy. I'm telling you that's not easy. But if you're looking for the power of God, it's not going to come by conventional means. Have you sorted that out yet? You can't walk in here, turn on this great music or get some good musicians up here and just start worshiping God. Oh yeah, you feel the presence of God, but then when somebody comes in here with cancer, they leave with cancer. That picture's wrong. And we're going to change it. We're going to believe the power in the name of Jesus. We're going to let the name of Jesus roll off our lips and it affect people. And spirits. Those boys went up that hill. I went over on a rock and finished eating my orange. I was sitting under a, what's called an otlatzintla. It's a, uh, ah, got it. It's a, it's, a, it's a thing where bamboo grows. Because bamboo doesn't have seeds. Bamboo is transplanted. It's a piece, big old piece of grass, actually. And I was sitting up in one of those things. It's real shady in there. Leaned up against a couple of real nice, strong. I finished eating my orange. And I took a nap. Serious. And my two boys are up there. And all them people up there got born again. Guess how many there were? Nine adults. And that's something. I got on my horse, went down to the creek. I'm laying on the side of the creek in the shade. Them boys are in that pool of water. It's refreshing, and they're having a great time. And then I set them down. I said, now then, how come I saw the nine oranges and you didn't? Okay. Wisdom. You need wisdom. You need to see the nine oranges. You need to understand that the power of God is with you. But you need to stop and look. 
God will give you the ability to do that. He'll give you the efficiency. He'll give you the might. He'll give you the understanding. He'll give you the wisdom. But you have to seek Jesus for it. You hear? One more verse and I'm going to stop. Over here in uh, um, 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 Psalms. I never will get over those nine oranges. I, I, the rest of my life I'll teach on that. That, that is a good thing. That is a so deep thing. I mean, it's amazing. We have a great church there now. It's awesome. I love going there. I mean, boy. But if I'd have walked out, how long before God would have had it brought back around, would it, would it be another generation, two generations of people dying, going to hell, before you got somebody else in there to start the church? Is that not valuable? Of course it is. It's very valuable. The Bible says in Psalm 62 and verse 11 and 12. Psalm 62, verse 11 and 12. God has spoken once, twice have I heard this. What does it say? Read it to me. Who's got courage? Read it. Psalm 62, verse 11. Read it. Go ahead. Isn't that right? Isn't that a good thing? Not only did God give me the patience, He gave me the eyes to see, the ears to hear, didn't He? Because he was interested in those people's souls just like he's interested in you. But you've got to come to face with the, fa the facts of reality. We have got to get serious. It's more than getting a new car. I can get one of them every week if I want them now. I don't want one. They're, them things are lots of trouble. The upkeep, I mean, boy... When, when you ain't never had something and you, and you start getting it, you, you, you go overboard a little bit sometimes and you, you get things you don't need and then now you've got to upkeep it. It's better off without it. But we can't see that because we want it. But one of these days, you need to let your lust be fulfilled and let the power of God run through you to help other people. It's not in a new pair of shoes or a sale at the mall. It's in souls. It really is. God don't mind. He'll show you the best places to shop. He don't mind that. He just wants you to understand that he's got the power for you. And you can have it. But you're not going to get it any other place. It's not going to happen. There's no amount of good you can do to procure it. It's all grace and mercy. You listening or not? Look, I was out there in the woods. I was doing really good. Uh, you know, I, I don't bother people when I'm out there. I just tell them about Jesus. If that's a bother, then so be it. And so we're, Ms. Hogan wanted a chopping block. Do y'all understand that sometimes you're, I'm a husband too? <laughs> that gets forgotten about us sometimes. But I have a family as well as seek after the power of God. And Ms. Hogan wanted a chopping block because at our house we run about 70 to 100 meals a day. And she runs the kitchen and I mean it's a big, big thing goes on. I want a chopping block, David. I said, all right. So I'm looking for wood, a piece of wood. I'm, I'm real particular. I wanted to have a good piece of wood. Well, I went out there, these fellows said, uh, we got some wood. I said, all right, I'm going to look at the wood. Now, you understand, I'm on a, I'm on a family-oriented job here. I don't feel like I'm on a God job. This is domestic. I'm going to get Miss Hogan a chopping block. I go 
And boy, they had these great big slabs of wood. And I mean, boy, you're talking about going to make some real nice chopping blocks. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm satisfied. I said, all right. So these boys are with me. They're big old strong young men. I burned the S off those guys already. They're good guys. <laughs> I said, here, take this, put it in my four-wheel drive. So they took these things. I paid the Indians, and I'm going back. Now, it's almost dark. We're fixing to start church. Y'all, out, out of the, it's twilight. Out of, out of, out of, out of it, dusk comes this. People run up to us. Help! You know, we're going, what? You know, we're on a domestic job here. What's the matter? There's a man dying over here. Would y'all please help us? And I looked at the brother. He said, man, I don't know what's going on. The, the head pastor. I said, what do you think? Is it a trap or should we go? Well, I mean, he said, well, let's go see us. Help us Vamos. We went around there a few blocks, and you hear this guy in there screaming, you know. We went around the corner of this house, and I looked in that, in that room in there. There was blood everywhere. What had happened, this fellow had an aneurysm, popped. You understand what I just said to you, aneurysm? Hello? Okay. All right. That man's going to die. I don't know who this man is. I know nothing about him. I just see blood. It's running out of his nose, his mouth, his eyes, his ears. I mean, he, buddy, blood was everywhere. I'm just, I'm just observing. And the Holy Ghost, now what? Hits me. Poof. I started shaking. I don't usually do that. And I started shaking and fell on my face. I fell in all that blood. It's on my jeans. It's on my hands. And then I get up. And I just reach and grab this fella. And I hit him in the top of the head with my hand. Blood stopped. Healed. Aneurysm. You know who the man was? Head witch doctor. Been fighting the gospel for 15 years. He's born again. His whole family's born again. Isn't that something? I'm telling you about the power of God. I'm telling you about the name of Jesus. Will y'all please stand up? Jesus. Jesus. Come on, great Holy Ghost. Y'all just begin to worship God, please. Go ahead, worship Jesus. Go ahead, worship Jesus. truly want the power of God. I mean, really, really. I mean, you heard the, what it cost us to win that village. See, I know something about you Americans. Well, uh, English. English, too. <laughs> well, actually, that's true, English, too, because just because of what I know about some stuff. But Y'all are going to just sit there and be docile until somebody slaps you like 9-11 did. And then you're going to rise up as a nation and you're going to solidify and you're going to galvanize and you're going to go and fix the problem. Listen to me. How long before you galvanize around the power of the cross? What do you, what's got to happen to make you wake up? To shock you out of complacency and lethargicness. Success has blinded you. You think it's something you've done. When it's the whole time the grace and mercy of the hand of God. It's Jesus, y'all. It's Jesus. 
it's Jesus. Whether it's aneurysm, whether it's a need for nine oranges, whatever your need is, it's available. And it's there. And it's on. The switch is on. The power is in the plug. Put it in. Let the juice run down the cable. Feel the energy. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm telling you, the great Holy Ghost is with us. The great Holy Ghost is with us. <clears throat> well, I don't like it because you let that boy get bit by your dog. Uh, please show a little bit of maturity. I wouldn't want the boy bit by the dog. The dog didn't bite the boy. There's no blood involved. He got his water. But he had to go about it a particular way. So do you. I was born into the gospel. Did that make me saved? No. No. When I got born again, did that give me all the legal rights of the Lord Jesus? Yes. But do I know how to use them all? No. Then I have to seek heaven, don't I? I have to. And I have to be diligent about it. My family and I, we're very diligent about it. And that's mercy, I can tell you that. Let's just go ahead and pray. Go ahead. See?